Marketing is constant iteration. Uh, you know, it plays a crucial role in your business, but it's a role that does require constant attention. Look, if you want to be the lawyer, be the lawyer, but don't ignore the fact that somebody's got to be the marketer in the firm. And if it's not you, you better find somebody who it's going to be. Hey, law firm owners, welcome to the Your Practice Master Podcast. We're your hosts. I'm Michael Patrick Stroud. Call me MPS. And I'm Richard James. And today, today, what are we talking about? I think today we should talk to you about law firm marketing because we like around here to talk about conversion, right? Yeah, we focus a lot in on conversion because I think for many firms, there's a huge opportunity sitting in front of them with conversion. But as you and I both know, uh, conversion is useful if we've got leads to convert. Yeah, real quick on that. So we just uh, are coming off fresh off the EAY Entrepreneurial Attorney of the Year competition. You and I interviewed all four of the finalists, yes. and they got to win a prize, and they're going to get to compete in the upcoming May Partners Club event. Super excited. Stokes to you. Stokes to you. That's stoked, the, yeah. stoked for you. Stoked for you. There yeah, you go. Yeah. Yeah. Kudos to the EAY finalists. <laughs> yes. Right? Uh, uh, the Jacksons, uh, Francis and Alexandra. Uh, we've got James Jones, uh, Jody Donato, and Charles Laputka. Yeah. Right? All very, very cool stories. And, and we've got like starters like that just you know first couple of years and they just got it rocking and rolling and then we've got like legends like charles has been around for seven eight years right. and he kept the momentum going and really kicked it into high gear and then you've got francis and alexandra who's a larger firm but figured out how to go to the next level and then you've got like james jones just been steady all the way along finally coming to a culmination right now most of them honestly focused on conversion right yeah. Not all, but they all focused on the numbers that the conversion talked about, and they talked about the importance of it. So again, we believe conversion is vital. Like, if you don't understand your conversions, if you don't understand what we call your perfect client life cycle, you're going to struggle. That being said, if you don't have leads, you can't convert anything. It's not much to convert. So Let's I, talk to them about marketing. Yeah, right? let's focus in on marketing, and I think today what we want to do is uh, kind of give some, some oil wells, if you will, to, mm -hmm. to look into as a law firm. Mike? Yeah, I, I borrowed that statement. I can't even tell you who I borrowed it from years ago. I've I, heard that thrown around a lot lately. So Have you? Yeah, I have. Yeah, you know, these things get, these thought leaders all start l l latching onto the same ideas. I, I want to probably give Robin Robbins a shout out. I think it's her who I first heard the oil well concept from. Could be wrong. It could have been Kennedy. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, the general idea of what's an oil well, like what is literally a physical oil well in Texas, say, or Oklahoma? What is it? It's literally a, a well that consistently produces oil. Right. And so if the oil well is working and it's not dry, it's continually kicking out profits and liquid gold every single day, right? Quite literally. No. If, like many oil wells, if it goes crazy and it goes bursts, you know, and it gets too much oil at once, it throws the whole system to a whack. Sure. And if it's dry and it doesn't give out, you know, oil now, it's not profitable and they end up shutting it down, right? Correct. This is the same idea for a law firm. Right. It's the same idea for a law firm. And it's so it's trying to identify those oil wells. But before we can identify the oil wells, I think we have to start back a little bit. Okay. And, and when a law firm is getting ready to embark on marketing, whether you're brand new and just starting marketing for your law firm, or you've been in the game for a while and, and you've been marketing, like anything else, I think we need a goal. Yeah, I, I, I completely, you're right, spot on. Um, you know, if we look at the PCLC, the perfect client life cycle, it measures how many leads do you get, how many of those turn into sets and shows and so on. And, and rather than going down the, 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 that path, let's just stop at leads. Sure. So if, if you don't have enough leads, you need, you need uh, to generate more leads. But if you don't have a goal as to how many leads you want, you either might not get enough or you might get too many. And you don't like, – like when we set – our most recent goal, right? Yeah. Was, we were we set a goal of 500 leads a month. Yes. Right. That's a pretty aggressive goal. It was a very aggressive yeah. goal. I mean, aggressive <laughs> goal. But we set it, and we're close. Yeah. We're close. But the, so, but they don't have to set 500. I, we've got a client that I've worked with a couple of weeks ago, and he said to me, "Man, if I could just get 10 leads a week, 
Sure. That would be so much more of an improvement because they was a bankruptcy firm, right? And, and they were really struggling because of the down market. The market's changed now, but um, you know it's changing, and and he's hitting his ten leads a week with no problem. But but I talked to him about the idea that you need an oil. So the ten leads or the, the goal of whether it's ten leads a week or 125 leads a week is irrelevant. What's relevant is that they have a goal, right? Yeah, and I would say that this is where knowing your numbers and your conversion metrics will help you set that goal. Yes. Right? Because we know, because we want 500 leads, if we expect to pay 50 bucks a lead, well, do the math. We won't do public math here, but you get my point. You could <laughs> right. do the math, mm -hmm. and you could determine what your overall marketing spend needs to be. So it, it, people say to us all the time, well, how do I know how many leads I should have? Well, I would say to you, how much do you want to invest in marketing? It starts there, right? right? How much do you want to invest in marketing? And then once you identify how much you want to invest in marketing, now you can start to reverse engineer. So in my opinion, once you know how much you want to invest in marketing, you could reverse engineer and think, okay, uh, so if I want to spend X dollars in marketing. Yeah, let's say they want to spend 1000 bucks a month in marketing. Right. Now, by the way, if I can put a pin in that for just yeah. a second. How do you know it's 1000 bucks? Because you have to work off of a percentage, right? So you, you can't say, well, I got $1,000 in revenue, so I'm going to spend $1,000 in marketing. That's not going to work. No. It's got to be a percentage of your overall revenue. So just as a rule, r rough rule of thumb, yep. um, we're talking about like 15%. Mm -hmm. So that's a rough rule of thumb. 15% of your gross revenue is kind of what your marketing budget should be at a maximum. There might be a time in your history when you're first starting off where it's more than that because payments have to catch up or revenue has to catch up. Sure. Uh, there might be a time in your career where it's lower than that because you've got a high percentage of referrals, but 15% is a reasonable rough thumbnail of what you should be investing in marketing. So that's how you get to your numbers. So now back to you. They're going to spend $1,000 a month. Now what do they have to do? I reverse engineer it, okay. right? So I, I go from... Okay, um, so what does – I work back from higher rate. Okay. So I, I figure out, okay, um, if a consultation shows up, how many consultations of those do I convert into a client? What percentage of those people do I convert into a client? Right. And then once you know that metric, you can say, okay, so I, I need to generate 10 clients a month. Right? Okay. And then you have to say, okay, so in order for me to get those 10 clients – I need to meet with 20 people. Okay. Right? Okay, so you know you have a 50% conversion rate. You got a 50% conversion rate. Okay. Right? A little so, low. A little low. A yeah. little low. I'm you're, just working off of averages You're here. batting 100% this last week. I am. Feels good. Um, <laughs> and, and so so I, I've got to meet with 20 people. Well, now we need to reverse that. Okay? Uh, of those 20 people, uh, how many of those show up out of the people that originally set an appointment? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, so let's say it's... Uh, it's uh, 70, so let's let's say that's 30. 30. 30 so they, they set 30 appointments. They set 30 appointments. So you can see I'm, I'm working backwards here, right? right? So, so we set 30 appointments, 20 of them showed up, 10 of them hired. Right, but now how many leads did you need to get those 30 appointments? Exactly, which now comes to your set rate. So when you get, when you get leads in, how many of those right now are you currently converting into an appointment in terms of a percentage? Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you don't know that, then it starts to help. Th this is why we start with conversion first. Yeah, this is why conversion first yeah. helps. Otherwise, it's really difficult to set a goal for marketing right. in terms of an actual number of yeah. leads if we don't know how many of those the rest of the funnel is going to spit out. Yeah, well, this is, this is I mean, it just... I thought we were going to talk about marketing something sexy day and avoid conversion. <laughs> but the reality is the moment you go down this rabbit hole, you realize this is why it's so important to know this stuff because otherwise you can't properly even set a goal. Well, and, and I would go as far as to saying, like, if, if you don't know your conversions, you're neglecting marketing because you're literally shooting dark. I, you have right. no idea Correct. what you're trying to go for. Yeah. And so so then once you know your... Um, Sets were at... Tw you were at 20... Uh, with 30 set appointments. 30, 30, 30 leads to get 20 set appointments to get 10 hires, right? Mm, 30 yeah. set appointments, yep, yeah. to get 20 people to show up to right. get 10 hires. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Right. So so, so now we're... Uh, that means if you have a 50% set rate, which is not very good, that means you need 60 leads. 60 leads. If you've got you know a 70% set rate, you, you need like 40 leads, right? Give Correct. or take. So, so you kind of know what you're based on your set rate, how many leads you have. So let, let's assume that they're... 
you know, they don't have their ducks in a row and, and they, they do a reasonable amount of marketing and their set rate is actually like 50%. And that's usually where we see, you know, newbies come into our world where they don't have a system for it, right? Right. So, so let's say they have a set rate of 50%. So now they need 40 leads to accomplish their goal. 60. Right? Or sorry, 60 leads to accomplish their goal. And, and, and let's say, um, you know, they, they already have 30 leads coming in and they have $1,000 they want to spend. Mm-hmm. And so now what we're basically saying is they can spend like basically 30 bucks a lead. A lead. Right? Correct. Is that feasible? Absolutely. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think it's, it's a little low. It, it depends per, on practice area. Pers- personal right. injury firm in right. Los, An- so Los Angeles. No. 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 Uh, but if you're a bankruptcy firm in Alabama. Yeah. Probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably. I, I, I always use a rough. I, I like to get to the fifty dollar lead. Yeah, fifty dollar lead. But see, the conversions will help you identify what that is. So now you'll know. Okay, is a thousand bucks too little? Is it in line? Mm. Can you not get to the sixty yet? If that's your cap and that's your budget, right? right? You could start to identify these things. But now you've got yourself a goal. So mm. working backwards through the conversions. Yes, I know. For some of you, not that sexy marketing opinion. But now we could dive into once we've got our goal, Mm -hmm. now it's time to craft the marketing. Mm -hmm. And I think we start with uh, our triangle, right? Yeah, I hope we didn't lose half of them. Uh, We probably did. So for those of you that are still here, you're a trooper. (laughs) Yeah, thanks for sticking around. I mean, we we know that lawyers don't like math oftentimes, right? I mean, they, we've, we're told that regularly, that a lot of the lawyers got into law school because they wanted to avoid science and math. Now, there are some lawyers who actually dig it. Yeah. And they, they feel like they see themselves as business owners, which is cool. Well, and the ones that either embrace it or tolerate it mm-hmm. are the ones that succeed, like yeah. that, that just really stand out, the, the no, superstars. No, no question about it. Right. No question about it. All right, so let's, let's so now so now we know we got a thousand bucks to spend and we're trying to get you know, basically an, an extra 30 leads. Mm-hmm. And so how are we going to go about doing that? So now we got to build an oil well. We got to build an oil well. That kicks you out 30 leads every single month, right? Correct. And so what is an oil well? We, we, we've defined what it is, but like, what is it now in marketing terms? In, in marketing terms, it's a medium that just consistently produces you leads mm-hmm. to fill your funnel. Yeah. So let's Talk about marketing 101, right? So Dan Kennedy taught me, I taught Michael, we all teach you, you know, the marketing triangle is that we measure the message, the media, and the market, right? Uh, The market is... That's your target market. That's uh, now, and and I see people, you know, you could get really specific with target market, right? You you need to clearly identify who it is you're trying to attract, Mm -hmm. right? To your, your example is the... Soccer mom between 45 and 54 that drives a minivan, right? right? Like I, Now, that's very specific, but that's a target market. So we need to identify who are we trying to speak to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. I mean, so some firms serve certain um, – like some firms serve people in the Catholic Church. Sure. It's possible. Some people, some firms serve people in the Jewish community. Some people serve people in the immigration community. Yep. Uh, some, pe- some firms have age groups. Uh, some pe- firms have – Asset amounts, right? Yeah. There's different. There is a. There is somebody that's your ideal target market. Correct. So we have to start there and figure out. All right, that's our market. So so we have to identify who that is. And the reason why that's important is two reasons. The other two legs of this stool, Correct. or the angles of the triangle, sides of the triangle, are the media and the message. And so if you if you use the wrong media, trying to track the wrong demographic market. It's not going to work if you use the wrong like if your mar- market was twenty somethings mm-hmm. and you use a newspaper, <laughs> right? Right. Uh, good luck. Correct. Right. I mean that that applies to this whole triangle. So so the key is making sure we clearly map out each section of the triangle because one of those legs of the triangle is incorrect. It's going to break down marketing. So well, what happens when they're all correct? Well, when they're all correct, now you've got an oil well. Right. Right. It works. It works. And I mean, even we, for as good as we think we are at this, Mm -hmm. we have to keep trying and keep trying and keep trying, right? Marketing is constant iteration. I mean, you can develop an oil well, but understand that it's still constant iteration. You're going to have to be developing new messages, new creative. Uh, You know, it's a role, right? Marketing, it plays a crucial role in your business, but it's a role that does require constant attention. 
Yeah, I mean, look, if you want to be the lawyer, be the lawyer, but don't ignore the fact that somebody's got to be the marketer in the firm. And if it's not you, you better find somebody who it's going to be. And you can't outsource it to some third party for a lot of reasons. One, because uh, they don't have the they can't charge you enough to become your full-time marketing person, right? That just wouldn't work. And and secondly, their interest is self-serving in many ways. And I'm not saying it's bad because they need to be profitable too, but somebody in your firm has to be the marketer, right? Yeah. I, I mean, simply said, a third-party marketing agency, with all due respect, is not going to show the care and attention to the marketing of your firm like you would or someone else that's dedicated to your firm. Work. But they can be. I mean, we use a third-party company, and they're great. You can use them as tools and resources yeah. for certain medias or messages and making sure they're mo- – but still, even then, they've got to be monitored. Right. And you got to constantly stay up to make sure that got you're it. inspecting the work that's being done. Yeah, a whole other message for a yeah, whole other time. Yeah, certainly. But, 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 okay, so now we've got the message, the media, the market. So we, had, we identified what the market was. The media is what? That's that's your message. Your your, your uh, the media. Oh, excuse me. It's the okay. media. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> that's the, your medium. Yeah, the right. Medium. So that's that's what you're on. Whether that's Facebook, whether that's direct mail, whether that's commercial TV, uh, radio. Right. It's it's the platform you're using to communicate your message. That's correct. Yeah. So and there's lots of them. Billboards right. to TV to social media to Google LSAs to Google My Business to Google Organic. There's lots and lots and lots of different type of mediums. Some of them are faster acting than others. Sure. Some of them are faster acting. And now, if you're wondering how to figure out which medium you need to start using, I tell you, it starts with your market. You mm-hmm. need to figure out who the market is so you could determine which medium they spend time on. Yeah. If I can give them some general quick, st- well, l- before I give them a quick start, let's let's. So we we talked about media, we talked about the market. What about the message? Message is your offer. What what is it, right? What, what is it that you're marketing? Mm-hmm. Uh, it, you have to craft an offer that speaks directly to your market. Yeah, usually can- pain driven. And- yeah, yeah. Well, Kennedy talks about it as a salesman in print. Sure, right. that's a good way to put it. Yeah, he he says it's a salesman in print, whether that's video or audio or mm-hmm. actual print, whether sure. it's direct mail or whatever. But it's it's taking whatever you do in a consultation and repeating it in the spoken written word. Right. Um, and and uh, that means that what you and I know, mm-hmm. in order to maximize your conversions uh, at all points in the sales process, we have to get to their hell. Correct. And we have to get to their heaven. Yep. Which means in, in our marketing material, we have to be able to name their hell, and we have to be able to name their heaven. And, and if we do that right, they'll, they'll wonder if we were sleeping under their bed at night how much we know about them, right? <laughs> but if you do it wrong, <laughs> if you do it wrong, you're going to quickly think that your market and your media are wrong. Right. But in reality, many times it's not. It's actually your message. Correct. People go, ah, I tried direct mail. It didn't work. Really? What do you mean it didn't work? Right. Uh, I mean, what practice here? Well, I'm in bankruptcy. Mm, Wait, what? Right. I I, I can show you 100 firms it works for. Why doesn't it work for your firm? Oh, well, my town is different. Uh Ah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, we one of the EAY finalists literally today they did. was talking was that exact situation. Yeah, the presenter came up on stage, showed, "Hey, here's what most people do with their direct mail," and then that EAY finalist back in the day was like, "Huh, that kind of looks like mine." <laughs> And then showed them how it should be done, right? Yeah. And so it, it, many times your message plays one of the biggest pieces. Um, if you nail the message, now things really start to click. Yeah. If, if you – I, I mean, I think the message is the most important. I would agree. Um, I think if you have the right message, then once you get the message, you can go testing other mediums. Right. You, you can do use iterations on different mediums to figure out which one hits the best. Like we know right now that our Facebook stuff is working. So yesterday our meeting was about how we take that stuff and start boosting it on, on YouTube, right? On YouTube, on TikTok, the whole nine. Right. So it's, it's once you have a message that works, now you can repeat it over and over again. So getting that message nailed is, is – is, and there's lots of ways to do that. That and we, we don't have we, maybe another message for another time. Sure. We can teach them all about that. But hint, ChatGPT and, and AI is a real great tool for this. I get an opportunity to give a presentation on this in a 
couple weeks. That's right. Yeah. That's right. You're going to you're going to be talking about all things AI and ChatGPT come the Partners Club event and you're going to be giving them a, how many tools are there now or plugins? It's uh, in it, the thousands, it, it, isn't it? Oh yeah, it's an astronomical amount and it just continues to evolve on a weekly basis. And it's just impossible to keep up with. So what you got to do is is boil it down and find the ones that they could start using right away. Exactly. And a, a number of people started using ChatGPT, which is good, but there's even better tools than that. Now. There's better tools and then are, are you using it effectively? Right. Right, right. right? Yep. Are you Correct. using it effectively? So look, I mean, yeah, when, when it comes down to marketing and identifying your oil wells, um, you have to start with a goal, mm -hmm. and then you, you've got to build out your message media market. Mm -hmm. And once those three fit mm -hmm. and you hit it, you've developed an oil well. Yeah, and so then you put the oil well through your lead conversion machine, yep. what we call the perfect client life cycle. Mm -hmm. Measure the number of sets, number of shows, number of hires, number of people that paid the average client value, mm -hmm. the referrals you get from it because you serve them well. And that takes a couple of cycles or whatever, and you see if it works, and you get... So how do you know if an oil well works? Let's talk about that. What's a good oil well? What's a bad oil well? What, sure. what if an oil well throws off you know, more leads than you need? Is it a good oil well? Not necessarily. How many qualified leads is uh, it? Is yeah. it? shedding off for you and and from then um are those qualified leads setting appointments uh, are they showing up to their appointment are they hiring so again we somehow end up back at conversions but <laughs> that's what it is i mean you want to evaluate the quality of an oil well you have to identify what the conversion metrics are from the oil well to the very end of the cycle yeah which we always said, if you don't have a good quality lead conversion machine, you don't know if your marketing, your lead generation machine is actually working, right? And so you need to make sure you have a good quality lead conversion machine. So whatever you put in the top of the funnel, you can have confidence that it, it's being measured equally. Right. Because if one day Sally answers the phone, and one day Billy answers the phone, and one day Bobby answers the phone, and nobody of them are using any particular structure or script, and one day this lawyer meets with the prospect, and one lawyer, one day this paralegal meets with the prospect, and you have no structure or script, now you have inconsistencies all over the board. Well, and this is why we say, and you guys have probably heard us mention this before, uh, for many firms, giving you more leads is a sin, because... Most of the time, if you don't have a conversion machine from appointment lead to appointment set to show to hire to getting paid in full, well, now it's very difficult and, and doesn't make much sense to just pile a bunch of leads in the top of the funnel, filter them down just to either not know your metrics or not convert them at the best rate possible. When you got the lead conversion machine and you know your conversion metrics, now you can actually make educated marketing decisions. Now generating more leads makes a lot of sense. Yeah, so this is where the beware of the snake oil salesman, right? I this is where we get real this is where you and I struggle with these guys or gals out there that are just selling the solution to their problems is the you know hire our firm to get you more leads and uh, it's the sexiest offer out there right because it, it doesn't require a ton of work I, I need to qualify not all of them are snake oil not problems. all of them not all of them but that being said if you were to take a percentage a much larger percentage of the offers that you probably see on a daily basis have something to do with generating more leads or more clients or they, more clients, they, which in return, they're just saying more leads correct. because they're filtering clients for leads because it's sexier to you. And, and in reality, they're just filling the top of the pipeline with more leads, which isn't a bad thing, but it is a bad thing if we don't know any of the other data. Yeah. It, it, and the other thing, I, it, what saddens me is I hear so much so often I, I don't do marketing because marketing doesn't work. I tried marketing. Sure. Marketing didn't work. And so we, or we pride ourselves on not doing anything. All of our business comes from referrals. And I, well, congratulations. Great. That's awesome. Yeah. But my gosh, what a, what a waste of opportunity. If you're that good at what you do, why would you want to hide it from the rest of the world? Right, right. It, it, yeah, unless you had plans to literally keep it small and that was it. Even still, you, you just can't depend on that forever. No, no, because if that oil well dries up at some point... Worst number of businesses. One. Yeah, 
worst number. But that's why you want to have three oil wells. So you want to develop this, then you get that one rocking and rolling, yep. then you get the second one, mm-hmm. then you get the third one. By the time you have three oil wells, first of all, your business is humming. Oh, for sure. Uh, secondly, you feel really good because you don't feel like you're dependent on any one particular thing. Right. It means your lead conversion machine is also working. Correct. Which means it, it's very possible you've now started to replace yourself in, out of that machine. Mm-hmm. And now you've become the business owner. And maybe you still like being a lawyer. Sure. If that's what they like to do because they enjoy it. But they don't have to be the lawyer anymore. I mean, that's where this all gets really, really fun. I mean, we were talking to Charles Laputka today about, about you know, he's going on a, a – because his, his family had a weekend off of sports. He's actually taking a trip to do a, a motorcycle cross-country in Joshua Tree or something. Yep. And and he's got two or three other businesses because he's been able to free up his time. I mean, life gets fun all of a sudden, right? Yeah, well, now you free up your time to invest in other things, whatever that may be for you. Yeah. 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 I think this was a good episode. I think so, too. I mean, look. I, I know they wanted something else. <laughs> you wanted us to get on and do what every other agency out there does, which is to give you tips on marketing uh, just from the perspective of the easy button, quick fix. Uh, but I think we all know there's not just an easy button, quick fix. So many people have disagreed with me, but I have often said that marketing is 80% arithmetic, 20% systems. And only 10% new ideas. Yeah. Even I, the stuff we're trying that to try to see if it works isn't actually new. It's not new. It's just no. different for us. Right. But we have to have the arithmetic behind everything to make all of our decisions. And then the systems to make everything work. So these new ideas, there's not a lot of new ideas in marketing. There's a new not a, media. Right, and even maybe a new version of a message. Maybe. Maybe. But, but, I, but the actual like concept behind it, Pretty much the same. Probably want to talk about the gentleman's agreement. Yeah, yeah. So look, guys, uh, gentleman's agreement, what is that? Well, we just ask if you're here, and maybe this isn't your first time listening, but you've been on here a few times. Uh, We do this content just with our own time, money, and resources. uh, And all we ask for in exchange is if you enjoyed today's content, go ahead and drop a like down below and make sure to hit that subscribe button or follow button, depending on which platform you're listening or watching on and turn those bell notifications on. So you can keep getting this fun content. I hope it's valuable and uh, please feel free to comment down below and let us know. Yeah, we enjoy having this conversation. If you can't tell, we really do like this. Uh, uh, It is work, but we do it every week. So do it every week, uh, yeah. and they get to see us fired up with some topics every now and again. Every now and again. So yeah. hope hope you got an interest out of this. Uh, we'll see you again next episode, right? Absolutely. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in.